Voices from the Mausoleum is brought to you by the You Run Podcast Network and yourunpodcast.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Voices from the Mausoleum, and welcome to another episode of Remakes and Continuations with my co-host Scott Harding from the You Run Podcast. Hello. Uh, I'm excited for this one. This, this, I'm going to say it now and get it out of the way so you can have your rant and rave and then we can <laughs> review it. Uh, this is a prime example of when a remake is better than the original. What's another example? You got another example? Uh, very controversial example, probably Evil Dead. Yeah, that's probably my my other one I have on that you won't agree with, which is The Wolfman. No. <laughs> but I don't agree with you on this one, so that's okay. No, I, I didn't think you would. I love this film. No, I and I do too. I just don't think it's better than the original. I, I think casting Jeffrey Rush in the Vincent Price character is genius. Jeffrey Rush is arguably one of the most gifted actors in the world he can turn his hand to anything from barbosa to a man coaching the king to to speak he's so so gifted and in this yeah, he's well-rounded yeah I, I think in this he had chance to have fun and i don't think he has fun on lots of films he does lots of films he does are very serious and straight laced and in this he could just be a bit weird yeah so, um, yeah, so this episode we're talking the 1999 House on Haunted Hill. You nearly said, you nearly said house, you nearly said Hill House. I Haunted did. The Hill House, yeah. Or um, the haunting, okay, so I play a board, a horror board game called Betrayal in the House on the Hill. It's like, there's a bunch of them like that. And so I always like, blah, blah, blah. I did okay. <laughs> yeah, th this is definitely not The Haunting, which is an atrocious movie. That's Have a remake too, right? That that is a remake. That's the one with um uh his name always escapes me. I have a particular set of skills and I will find you and I will kill oh, you. Oh, it also Liam, has Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. It also has um Catherine Zeta Jones. Yeah. Owen Wilson, not Luke yes. Wilson. And I forget who plays the main girl. She's in a bunch of stuff though. She plays the mom in the conjuring. I can never remember her name. Yeah, it's it's not that movie. That movie's arguably one of the we, we need to do that. That could be a, an entire 30-minute rant of how much I hate it. I like that one. No! Do you really? <laughs> no! The let, me say, let me preface, though, because if we do eventually cover it, this is going to come up. I have not seen it in a very long time. I would have to revisit it. But as my younger self, I really liked it. So we will see if that changes watching it as an adult. Because I think the last time I watched it, I was a teenager. Yeah, at 14, I loved that movie. It had Catherine yeah. Jones with her boobs pushed right up here. It was an incredible movie as a teenager. And her now. bisexual energy of like, yeah. 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 I'd have to revisit. And I'm not saying I may, I may come out of it completely different, but I liked it. I used to really like it. So Okay. We need to tee that up for some point. Yeah. We always say, you know what? I'm going to actually make a note of that because we always say ones we want to do. And then we have to plan it. We're like, well... Which ones did we say we wanted to do? Yeah. I'm typing yeah, in. Put, put, put it in. Plan it in. We should also do 13 Ghost. Yes. Oh, another remake that's better than the original. Yes. That yeah. one's so good. That one we can agree on. C crazy well, Matthew. Not this Hiller. one. We don't agree on this one. So I think I will say this in the in commenting back to what you said about um, Jeffrey Rush as the Vincent Price. I think that was probably as good as it was ever going to be. There is no one for me that is ever going to be Vincent Price. And in this situation, it it played out very well. They definitely went the best route they could with that character. Um, the I do think, one... though, the wife that plays, or I mean the wife, the woman that plays Evelyn in this one, what is her name? Uh, I can't think. She plays Jean Grey in the X Men. Um, Fam, I don't know how to say her first name. Jansen. Fam yeah, K. Fam, Fam K. Fam K. Fam K. Jansen. K Jan yeah. Jansen. I love her as Evelyn. She's fantastic, and I didn't. She is a much stronger performance in the place of the wife than the woman who played the wife in the original. She was kind of like meh, but the but Jansen that plays Evelyn, she did great really really good actress she was in a series with bill skarsgård as well and she's fabulous in that she plays bill skarsgård's mum in that and i can't remember what it's oh called. um hemlock uh hemlock grove that's it yeah and she's, she she's great, great in that. that 
yeah. Uh, the only other person I think they could have done because he was still alive at the time was Christopher Lee. <clears throat> Christopher Lee could have could have pulled that off. But uh, that, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I could I can agree with that. That's, that's about him. Yeah, Christopher Lee's. He's like he was like a million years old though. Do you ever watch something that was like that's like a hundred years old and he was already old in it and you're like, yeah, like that, like Dracula. <laughs> yeah, like in, in, in Dracula, he is a, a, he's an old man, and then you watch him in a movie thirty years later, and he has he's not aged a day. He's still an old man. Yeah, and you're just uh, like, is he really? I don't know. It seems weird. Anthony um, Hopkins is another one. Like Anthony Hopkins is nearly a hundred now. And he looks exactly the same as he did in the nineties. He looks exactly the same as he did when crazy. he was like done Hannibal. It's weird. It, we need yeah. to know the secrets. The secret is Hollywood. Hollywood, lots and lots of money, a healthy lifestyle, and lots of um, treatments to keep you looking young. I don't know if healthy lifestyle is true. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe. the rest of it definitely. Yeah, um, uh, unlike me, who's aged terribly. I'm only twenty two. <laughs> And there's people going, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a hard life. <laughs> there's like, uh, doing the math. <laughs> um, you know who else is in this, but they don't have a very big part. Who? James Marsters from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, okay. He's the cameraman <laughs> at the beginning with the roller coaster. Uh, okay. He's the guy that gets on the roller coaster from after yeah. the interview about it or whatever, when they get on and they're like, they do the little ride or whatever. Yeah. Um, the ride, the ride is amazing. I'll keep my Buffy thoughts to myself because the movie's better than the series. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The ride at the beginning is incredible. Brilliant. So smart. And how is that not a ride in a theme park now? Cause that would, yeah. What, why you has know, that not become a thing? I was thinking, you know, the part when it like, you know, the obviously like the fake one goes off the tracks yeah, and then it goes Zoop, and then they're fine. Yeah. How expensive is it to replace that part of that roller coaster? It's going to cost a lot. Yeah. That's why no one does it. <laughs> it's so expensive. He's like, oh, the guy's arm keeps falling off. He's like, well, we'll just fix it. Like, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, you say it's expensive. I'm pretty sure Disney could afford to do that. So could Universal Studios. They've got... They've got that within their budget quite comfortably, I think. It's probably just a liability because if it malfunctions and the track doesn't go back on. Uh, yeah, this is true. Then, it, then it's, a lot, <laughs> it's a lot more expensive then than just repairing that one car. <laughs> yeah. It's a super cool concept for this, though. Yeah, really cool concept. And I love the fact that they set this up as something and it's not what they set it up as. So they set it up as like it's a theme park owner and they're going to have this party and they're going to do this thing where they invite the guests. And then yeah. straight away you get that paranormal element where the ghost changes his, his list. guest list. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this mm -hmm. movie is incredibly tacky. It's incredibly nineties cheesy. How goofy can we make it, but still give it a dark tone. And it's really hammy. All the acting's like way over the top, but it works for this setup and this story. It works perfectly. Yeah, I I think it's um, yeah. I don't I don't even have. I really do like this one. I don't have a ton of complaints or any that I can think of off the top of my head. But I think that the the misdirect in the beginning. I think I think starting it out with the roller coaster thing was very much a, this is not the same movie. Yeah. This movie is going to feel and be different than the original, which when you're going into something that's a remake is nice to know. Like, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know. For the, uh, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of stuff like that is like the um, Halloween ends. The opening credit and the, and the title card that comes up is meant to inform you that this is going to be a different experience than you might be prepared for. Yeah. And um and it was and then so it kind of just like reprograms. But of course, this is another one though where I watched this before I ever saw the original. Yeah, I'm the same. Um I didn't get into my Vincent Price days until I was probably mid-20s. 
Uh, I'll be honest, um, this is one of the only Vincent Price movies I've seen. That can't be true. Yeah, it is. You've never seen The Last Man on Earth? Nope. Oh, my God, it's so good. Or (laughs) what's the other really big one? Um, The Fall of the House of Usher? Uh, No, I haven't seen that either. Have you seen a stage play where he reads The Telltale Heart and acts it out by himself? Oh my God, he's brilliant. <laughs> he, Have he, you seen he, Thriller? <laughs> yes, I, 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 I'm very aware of who he is and I've seen loads of clips of stuff he's done, but I've never, well, you know, like that era of film is not my wheelhouse. It's something that I, yeah. some of it's okay. Some of it I find a bit like, oh. but he is, he is an incredible actor without question. When he's doing his opening monologue in the beginning of the original and he's like, She's so amusing. When he's talking about it twice. <laughs> he says it twice. She's so amusing. But he just says it with this like, oh, God, they're dynamic in that. That is something I do think carried over into this pretty well. It's the dynamic between um, the husband and wife. Because in the original, it's very toxic and catty and like argumentative. And it's just as... So in this, but I think it's a little bit funnier in the in the remake. Yeah, they made a real effort to make this. This is a very nineties movie. It yes. encapsulates sort of everything of that mm-hmm. that time period, down from the theme parks, down to mm-hmm. the way they interact, down to the the reporter who's there to get a story, and the way she behaves is it's very Gale Weathers, mm-hmm. very Gale. It's Weathers. the the tropes of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, the girl, one bugbear I have with this is the girl who gets all the lights working by fiddling with some wires in a box. Oh. That, that's not how electricity works. For anyone who doesn't know, I, I'm an electrical project manager. And fiddling with wires to turn all the lights on, I like... just, yeah, it's like everything worked. Just like, that's not how that works. <laughs> and if you touched those bare cables with your bare hands and it sparked like that, it would stick you to it and you would die there. I would never think in a position where I don't have a knowledge base for something that's electrical. I wouldn't touch it. No, it's risky. Yeah. It's there's like, I understand electrics. I still don't do it myself. I, I manage people who do it, but (laughs) like I don't touch any plumbing. So if we've got a leaky tap or something like I don't touch that because I don't like water going everywhere. And yeah. a couple of times I have done it, like we had a block toilet, not that a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I had to sort that out because it happened over Christmas. Yeah. And oh. I flooded our bathroom. It come through our ceiling. It was the worst experience of my life, but I had to do it because it was Christmas. I had no choice. So, yeah, if I don't understand it, I tend to leave it alone. Just leave it. Yeah. Leave it yeah. and call, call a professional. Yeah. What did you think of the characters in this compared to, like, as far as just, like, the casting and who they I were? Think, I think all the casting in this is really good. I like the mm-hmm. fact that they've all kind of got their own backstory. We dive yep. deeper into some than others, but I like the fact yeah. that that's there. And I like the fact they made a point of making them all very different. Yeah. So when they interact, like there are certain people who band together because they have similar personality traits and there are mm-hmm. other people who are like, well, I'm not going with you. I don't like you. That that The conflict between them, I felt, was very real. Uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, that, anything like that where they can cause friction between your main cast and you believe it works for me. And when you've got yeah. the two, the, the husband and wife, mm-hmm. their friction just bleeds into everyone else and like when they're having their arguments sort of that other people feeling uncomfortable and we've all been in a situation where a couple are arguing mm-hmm. and you kind of go oh but you you don't leave you just kind of take a step back and let them go and go this yeah. is interesting let's, let's oh yeah oh oh she done that did she oh wow and we've yeah, all been there I- Yeah, I think, and then I think too, kind of adding to what you said about giving them tension that feels realistic, then it's not as irritating when things like splitting up happen or when they go off and do their own things because you're like, well, yeah, because like if you're in a situation where you're not trusting and you don't really want to be around somebody, you're not, you may not necessarily be at a place yet where you're like, okay, but we still have to stick together. Like, yeah, it makes 
more sense to do it that way. Yeah, one thing that I think this movie does better than any other movie of this type is the set design. Oh, yeah, the set's awesome. The set, like every bit of the set from the main hall to the house itself down to when you get down in the the basement you've got like the the skinned thing in the glass box like everything is so on point even that big glass ceiling that they make a point of showing you and they really show it and then when it breaks like all of that is just so well done and it's using the set as a prop and using the set the set of this movie the house is a character all on its own yeah yeah, I agree. Which, I think I think that makes uh, yeah, I agree. I think because when you get the first shot of it like that weird it's like a very obscure kind of design for a, a set for a place but it's like, you know, it's like juts up into the sky, it's on this cliff like and then it's even like all of the pieces that are on the set um it's like everything works together to create the most like efficient like scary like so like for example that i don't know what it's called but the thing that spins yeah so like when you're getting into that space before you get into this that specific part where he gets into the thing and it spins around um everything that builds up to it it's like everything connects as like almost like a personality trait to each other so then when you go from a room to into these next segments when someone gets hurt or someone gets scared or whatever everything just feels so connected it doesn't feel like you don't go from one room and interact with something that feels like it doesn't fit which i think adds to what you're saying about it being a character on its own it's like everything that is in those spaces is part of its personality and it just all like comes to life in various ways and it was really really well constructed yeah and the only other film i can think that does that is 13 ghosts again the house has a personality of its own yeah but this one does it better these would make a good double feature. They're not quite the same film, but there's enough of a similarity that I think they would make a good double feature. Which way around would you watch it? I probably like 13 Ghosts more, so I'd probably watch this one first. Yeah, same as. <laughs> and then I'd, I'd watch 13 Ghosts and end on like the super, super high note because that's my one of my favorites. Yeah, there's a series coming of 13 Ghosts, I believe. You know how long we've been asking for that? Like when I yeah. saw the announcement for it, I was like, y'all, we've wanted this for <laughs> For 10 years plus so, yeah um my best friend who like doesn't do horror at all she likes uh, slashers so we go like she's my scream buddy like she's who i go see scream with well maybe not anymore but that's why i used to go see scream with and um but she um she loves that movie and it's amazing to me that someone who cannot watch paranormal supernatural horror at all she loves that movie and i think she loves it because of its storytelling and its set design like you know, so anyway. Yeah, uh, storytelling and set design, I think, play uh, not so much storytelling because that's kind of why you go to the movies, but set design plays a much bigger part than people give it credit for. Mm-hmm. If you had done exactly this movie and mm-hmm. just put them in a bog standard mansion, it would not have worked because the stakes aren't as high. No, no. But, this, yeah, this feels overwhelming from the first shot that you see so when they get there you're like automatically like okay this is a lot yeah i've got to ask you the question Mm -hmm. given the opportunity to go to a party like this and stay in a house overnight for a million dollars would you go it's hard to say because i feel like i'm in i would be like I could do so much with that because like, you know, I live in reality where like bills and and shit is like a lot and it's hard. So like financially, like my brain would be like, I would, yeah, a hundred percent. The movie, the horror movie lover though would be like, but then it goes back to like, do I believe in that stuff? Do I actually think something bad could happen? Like probably not. So, you know, like I'll probably would be okay. I don't know. See, I would go, and I found a huge plot hole this time around with this. Oh, so tell, they, yeah, do tell. So they, they all go and venture off and they go and do their things and they go up into certain rooms and they go down into the basement and they do all of this stuff. Yeah. If they'd have gone in, sat at the bar and drank their drinks all night long, 
they would have survived. And see, that's what I would have done. I would have just stayed in one place. There would have been no exploration, no trying to figure out what's, no, sat down. No, I, I genuinely, I wouldn't care. I'm here to get a million dollars. All I need to do is stay here for the night. Okay, so I'm going to sit at the bar. I'm going to drink half a bottle of whiskey. Then I'm going to fall asleep. I'm gonna, when I wake up, I'm a million dollars. I'm richer. a millionaire, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly so. that. And when you watch this movie back, like this time watching it, mm -hmm. if they'd done that, the house opens up in the morning. Yep, automatically. So why did they go venturing? Why did they go down to the basement? Why did they mess around with stuff? Just stay there and drain the bar. Would have been a very short movie. It, it would have. But I would have loved if they'd have just picked one character just to sit at the bar and that be the character that won. The character and it'd be that... like... <laughs> and it'd be somebody that like has no idea that all of that other bad stuff happens. They just like walk out and go home. <laughs> Yeah, oh, what a great little twist. Like at the end, it's like, oh, th all the doors are open. Oh, I'll take my check for a million dollars. Thanks a lot. Bye bye now. I just walked yeah. away. Yeah, with yeah. no knowledge as to what's happened to everyone else. Yeah. This so, is yeah. definitely a scarier movie than the original. The original is not scary at all, I don't think. Well, and the, but the original also plays a lot more with fake stuff and it being people driven versus like you know a crazy doctor and the staff and the people who die like it's different and i think that um the way that they did the like like i remember like the first time ever seeing this movie these some of these scenes really stuck with me like oh my cat's like yelling i hear you okay hi um <laughs> but um like those scenes like really stuck with me and i like when I think about those movies, those same scenes are like the first things that I think of. And I think when, whereas when I think about the original, I think more about the performances. I think more about, you know, the more whole like murder mystery side of it. And, and you just think about, it's just too different in that regard because it's people. Yeah. You know, there is a supernatural element to the original, but it's not anything like what they did with the remake. No, the only thing I would say that I'm not, a big fan of is that supernatural kind of big wavy floaty thing what, yeah the the death eater that the death eater that was before a death eater effectively it looks like the same thing from harry potter yeah um because that's it, that's what takes evelyn when he pushes it she goes through the wall and then it like what does it do it like sucks the life out of you i guess yeah kind of just it kind of like sucks your soul out and it, uh, that idea is great, but I think they could have done that without the big CGI floating kind of like Venom style monster that's like its it tentacles are going everywhere. It doesn't fit with everything, everything that else. they've done to build to that. Like even and, when you're getting all the flashbacks of what happened in the hospital, just yeah. take one of those characters, make that character the, the entity. The big Don't, baddie. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think, of course, obviously, too, because it's CGI, that that aged horribly. It oh, looks really awful bad. on a rewatch now. Yeah, it is very much. It's the same stuff that you could quite easily drag into our recording here and have it floating Just around in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very, <laughs> yeah, it's very much like one of the things you add to an Instagram story. Yeah, <laughs> like in the gift bar. Like yeah, exactly <laughs> that. And the, the thing is that that is 90s CGI now. What they had for CGI in the 90s, we can recreate that on instagram or tiktok just by drag and drop it's yeah. uh and uh, this is why i'm not a big fan of cgi yeah because if it looked like even like all the marvel movies like the ones that they really spent a load of money on like endgame mm -hmm. that looks great now but in 20 years time when my kids who grew up on that go to show it to their children they're like... gonna look at it and go what is this? What what we don't put the virtual reality? We're not a character in the movie ourselves now. We're through VR. What's this? Yeah, no, it's a good I, point. I I mean, I'm a big supporter of practical, which you know, like it's that's always the way to go. And it's unfortunate that they did it that way because the deaths, all of the other scenes, the blood vat, the the wall, where again, where Evelyn gets pushed through the wall, all of the stuff that leads up, um, you know, that spinning thing whatever that is all of those things are so good yeah oh the dream sequence i forgot about the dream sequence for a second that like all of that stuff is so good 
And when you get that, you're kind of like, oh, all right, I guess. Like, <laughs> it's a little mess. Yeah, it, it's kind of, a, it's anticlimactic because everything is building to, the, the whole movie is building to the big bad. Yes. And when you get the big bad, it's a no. floating goop. It's like, yeah. oh. Um, fun fact, that floating goop, you know, it's got like, you see loads of faces and like body parts and, and stuff, stuff in it. Um, do you know what that is? That is videos of naked ladies. The entire thing is videos of naked ladies that have all been merged into each other to make that. I did know there was naked people in it, but I didn't yeah. realize it was the whole thing. The, I, the did, whole, I did know that. Yeah, the whole thing minus a couple of times when you see main character faces, but the rest of it, I can't remember what it's from. It's from a a very artsy sort of nude photo shoot that interesting that they used all of those because they thought it was cool and it looked good i was gonna use one of the pictures of that as our background but then i was like no because if it's got nudity on it and it's too visible like youtube will freak out so i just didn't but but i did know that that was in there but i didn't realize it was a primarily like it's yeah it was i, I can't remember the reason they'd done it it was something to do with Either it was a movie that the director really loved or was inspired by or a producer. It was something like that. But it was all about how it was shot and like the way they used the photography. They used some of the techniques that that rude film made. They used some of those techniques in House on Haunted Hill as well. Huh. Interesting. So, yeah. Fun but fact. Again, Por porn inspires horror movies. Who knew? <laughs> a lot of horror filmmakers got their start doing porn. A lot of the OGs anyway. Yeah, yeah, um, they did. I think that was a time period thing, though, wasn't it? The sixties and the seventies. It's like that's yeah. that was the film industry. You could well, make more money doing that than you could try to produce and make a feature film. Yeah, well, and it was an easy step into horror because at the time, horror and well, even sometimes now, wasn't taken very seriously. So no yeah. one cared if somebody who did porn also did a horror movie. They're like, yeah, yeah, I guess whatever. No one cared. So it's a very different like. um different mindset around filmmaking in general um the only other thing i wanted to say um is i do think another really big strength of the remake was the choice to add so much story because you know the original is a little more um cut and dry it's very like cookie cut like the very specific couple things and then that's about it yeah. whereas with this there's like way more story and like you mentioned when we we're talking about the characters like them having more story like it just made everything feel more like three dimensional, you know? Yeah. And this is something again, that they deal with, they deal with people's personal issues. So yeah, there's, there's someone struggling with something and then that is how the ghost is then tormenting them through the thing, thing they fear the most. And it I like it personal. That. Yeah. And I, I like, if you've got, if you've got a spirit or a baddie who's tormenting you with something that you're genuinely afraid of mm -hmm. as an audience member watching that, that's like, Oh, I don't like that. Because that's something that if it was coming after me, it's going to prey on my fears. And that's that's a scary concept. Yeah. And this encompasses a lot of fears, a lot of things. It's not just like just a movie about underwater or just a movie about, you know, these like like the the couple of scenes like in, like the dream is the dream sequence when he's in the water. Is that, the, yeah. is that part of the dream? Yeah. When he's yeah. in the water, like I have a fear of water, like water terrifies me. And so the moment he hits that water, me as a viewer, I'm automatically on a different level of edge than I was five seconds prior to that. Yeah. Once he's in the water, I'm like, oh my God. Of course, in my head, I'm like, oh my God, it's a shark because that's always where my head goes. But water in general makes me uneasy because it, it reaches me on a different level than some of that other stuff. Yeah. But no, it's really good at doing that. Really good. I really like this one. It's what do you rate this? Uh... I don't know if probably an eight, eight out of 10. Yeah. It's the same for me. Eight out of 10. Yeah. That's a solid remake. It is. We haven't, we haven't had a solid remake for a while. This is refreshing. <laughs> it's true. Especially because our last video was black Christmas 2019. Yeah. Yeah. There's apparently another, <laughs> black, there's apparently another black Christmas in the works. Stop. I thought we were <laughs> done. <laughs> no, I saw it the other day. And when I saw it, I was like, that's amazing. Maybe next year. <laughs> God. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. I, that's all I had for this, for my thoughts on. House on Haunted Hill. 
<laughs> yes. Not uh, not uh, not haunting of Hill House. Haunting not... of Hill House. Not the haunting. Not betrayal on the house on the hill. No house, house on haunted on. Hill. from 1999, just before the millennium. Yeah, and it shows. It's, it's very 90s. <laughs> it's very 90s. This is about as 90s as you can get without watching Scream. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, especially with the paranormal stuff. I um yeah, so we so we're gonna be doing things different over at Voices with starting now, right? Yeah. Movies or I mean like how we're doing, like what we're doing, what are we what we're covering. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, over yeah. on my show. Our on show. your show. Yeah, yeah, on my channel. Yeah, so we're gonna be doing movies that we wanna cover because we've covered some real <laughs> Uh, let, let, let's be honest. We're going to cover some movies that we want to cover because we've covered some real shit and we didn't enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the honest answer. I mean, yeah. Yeah. No I don't point, know, like, timeline-wise, but this will probably go out at the end of January, so I don't know if, what your timeline. Do you, do you think the other one will be out first? Yeah, the other one will be out probably a week Wednesday. Okay, so... You know, if you haven't already looked, go watch us talk about um, Paranormal Activity. Uh, yeah. On yeah. Voices with You Run Podcast over on yeah. YouTube. Um, I'll, um, I've been trying to put the things at the ends, but I, I'll try, I need mean, to probably start putting the links in the descriptions to make it easier. But anyway, so make sure you're checking up on both of those. Yeah. So then we talk in more, more popular stuff too, in general, I think. Yeah. And if you've looked at our channel before and gone, oh, this is a bit amateurish. Go go and watch again because we've had an upgrade. Looks nice and swanky now. Nice and swanky. <laughs> yeah, swanky. Swanky. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on this episode of Remake. Scott and I will be back next month talking another remake, probably either The Haunting or Thirteen Ghosts. Maybe we'll see. Um, but yeah, hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Enjoy your uh, weekend, and we will see you in the next one. See you later. Mm -hmm.